Welcome to the 38th episode of Let's Conquer Books. Simon Sinek in his book Start With Why said, People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And what you do simply proves what you believe. In this episode, I talk about how to become better at anything by becoming relentless, not focusing on your limits, and not being afraid to take the shot. So let's get into it. I'm your host, Alexander the Great Reader, and this is a podcast where we read, study lessons, and build our inner power, because the next level we will reach does not tolerate cowards. The first strategy on how to become better at anything is becoming relentless. So you could get good at anything. The more you do something, the more you practice something, actual transformation happens in your brain. Once you get into that realm, you know you have an advantage over people because you're willing to believe in anything that moves you forward. If you're willing to work way harder than anyone else, and you know that if you stick with it long after it stopped being fun, then you would succeed at it. You know I like to use books as my examples, as sources of inspiration, sources of understanding and knowledge. So for this strategy of becoming relentless. There's a book called Relentless by Tim Grover. Tim Grover trained Jordan, Kobe, and Wade, Dwayne Wade, basketball players, all champions, all probable Hall of Famers. Jordan's in the Hall of Fame, Kobe's in the making, and Wade is also. Relentless is a state of mind that can give you the strength to achieve, to survive, to overcome, to be strong when others are not. He has a concept called cooler, closer, cleaner. To interpret that, you can be like good, great, or unstoppable. The cleaner is unstoppable. Now, a cleaner takes responsibility. These are steps of being relentless. Cleaners take responsibility. Now, Jordan, Kobe, and Wade, they hired Tim Grover to train them to take them to that next level. They used their own personal money. They knew that there was something better than what the team was offering them. So they took responsibility to take themselves to another level. Whatever cleaners want to have happen in in life, they take full responsibility for making it happen. And ultimately, they make it happen. Next is cleaners drop their excuses. Cleaners feel no pressure when they screw up and have no problem admitting when they are wrong and shouldering the blame. When a cleaner makes a mistake, he can look at you in the eye and say, I effed up. When things were going wrong, cleaners did whatever it took to get back in form and not let it happen again. So the book talks about Jordan, Michael Jordan, versus his rival, the Pistons. There was a couple, two, three years where he couldn't get over the hump to get to the opportunity to compete in the finals to win a championship. So he was very frustrated, but he didn't create excuses and said, you know what? We can't beat the Pistons. This is as far as we get. He just trained harder. He took responsibility and he ended up overcoming the Pistons and winning six championships. Kobe also had a challenge two years in a row where he lost, actually lost two championships to the Pistons and the Celtics. He didn't have excuses. He just worked harder, got more focused, took on more of the leadership role, and ended up winning, I think, three more after that. Wade had... A time where LeBron James left Cleveland to go to Miami because he wanted to win a championship. And Wade took charge of that trio because he was the one who has won championships and has been before. And it was technically his team. LeBron and Chris Bosh came there and he took charge. He didn't create excuses where, no, LeBron is better. I'm just going to step back. No, he took charge. He didn't excuses. And when they weren't winning, they didn't win the first time. It took them, I think, the second time to win them. And then they lost another. He took ownership and he and he never was given excuses 
Another advice this book says is stop looking for secrets, tricks, or shortcuts. So ask yourself where you are now and where you want to be instead. Ask yourself what you're willing to do to get there. Then plan to get there. Act on it. Training before and after everyone else and even training in the off season. That is what they were doing. Jordan and Kobe and Wade were there before everybody and after everybody and even training in the off season where most people were taking vacations and these guys were getting better. You got to do the work. So Tim Grover has coached some of the most successful basketball players in the history of basketball. And these players were also the ones who worked the hardest. The best players don't work harder because they're successful. They're successful because they work harder than anybody else. Now, the book talks about how Jordan was so passionate and worked harder than everybody that he ended up punching Steve Kerr because he felt that he wasn't trying hard enough in, in practice and putting enough of that work in to win championships. Kobe was a freak. People would see him there at six. Like, say the practice started at nine. He would be there four or five in the morning, train that whole time, do the practice. And then even afterwards, practice another two, three hours and then go home, sleep a little and come back and practice more. All that was on his own. He was putting in that work. You got to push yourself. That's another tip out of this book, Relentless. If you want success of any kind, you must be comfortable being uncomfortable. Every time you think you can't, you must do it anyway. The last mile, the last set, the last five minutes on the clock. You must play the last game of the season with the same intensity as you played it the first. When your body is screaming and depleted and telling you no way, a-hole, you work harder and tell yourself, do it now. That's the words of Tim Grover. And that was... What he learned from Kobe, from Jordan, and all these elite athletes. So the book talks about pushing yourself, and Jordan was a great example. Against Utah Jazz, he had the flu, and he still played because it was a important game. He played with the flu, and he, and he made the winning shot. That's pushing yourself. Kobe, he broke his index finger in 2010, and he had to play the finals like that. He pushed himself. No excuses. He took responsibility. He did the work. He practiced those times. Wade had a knee injury in 2013. He just had to tape it up every day, sometimes at halftime, to keep that knee together. But he pushed himself. He didn't have excuses. He did the work. He took responsibility. That's why this book is important. If you want to cheese, be better at anything. You got to be relentless. Second strategy is don't focus on the limits. If you tell yourself an empowering story, if you believe things about yourself that are empowering, they will set you up for success. They will create this confident environment inside of you where you're willing to take steps forward. You're willing to try other things that people won't try. The book I chose for this example is Life Without Limits by Nick Vujicevic. I probably demolished that last name. And you might have heard of him, and might have not, but he's a famous public speaker, goes around inspiring people. He also wrote this book, and he was born with this disease where he didn't have any limbs, no arms or legs. And he actually had his little stump to go out of one of his legs that looked like a finger. Now, growing up and seeing that how abnormal he was and how others had it different than him, he wanted to commit suicide. He even tried. But he changed his whole mindset. And the way he he wanted to be take care of himself, he didn't want others always taking care of him. So he learned how to brush his own teeth, take showers, put on clothes. He learned how to surf, how to public speak, how to write books. All these things he learned to to inspire others that, you know, your life doesn't have limits. Even though he had all these physical limits, he was doing things that were really incredible, challenging that don't challenge us. And the book teaches you that you need self-acceptance. Instead of dwelling on your imperfections, your failings, or your mistakes, focus on your blessings and the contributions you can make. That was his mindset, Nick's mindset. He didn't dwell on it. He didn't have arms and legs. He just felt he was blessed 
to go around and inspire others that he knew anything that he did will, will inspire others to do because they're like, wow, look at this man doing this stuff and he has no arms and legs and I have arms and legs and I'm not doing 5% of what he's doing. Attitude is another thing you learn from this book. If we choose the right attitude, we can rise above whatever challenges we face. Optimum, optimism is empowering. It gives you control of your emotions. Pessimism weakens your will and allows your moods to control your actions. So he had a good attitude. He said, I'm going to learn how to surf. I'm going to learn how to dress myself. I'm going to learn how to shower. He even, I think he even has a kid and he's married. Amazing story. This, you, if you have any limits in your life, this is the book to read. Because you don't have an excuse after reading this. So, another thing is opportunity. He talks about opportunity. To pursue your dreams, you must act. If you don't have what you want, consider creating what you want. And he created throughout this book a lot of things that are incredible. He has his own ministry, his own foundations. And he pursued his dreams and every opportunity that came with the potential, the opportunity of fulfilling that dream, he acted on it. The third strategy at getting better in anything is don't be afraid to take the shot. So putting yourself in the mental framework where you're not afraid to take the shot will allow you to blow past people who are better or smarter than you. Believe that you can get good at anything. Believe that missing one, one today doesn't mean you'll miss the next one tomorrow. A good example of this is the great Eli Musk and the biography written by Ashley Vance. Now, you read through the book and you see a lot of the shots he wasn't afraid to take. When he was part of the whole PayPal story, because his company, I think, was X.com and Emerge, but he had no experience or education in banking or finance. But His technology, his dream, his mission was to really change those industries. And it was going to disrupt it. And he was fighting against banks. And the whole transaction of money, every business that's involved in that and profits from that. And he had to get people mentally ready to send payments online, which was a weird thing back when he was creating this company. But he wasn't afraid. He took those shots and he was successful and he was able to sell his company for a lot of money, which helped that money. He took it and started Tesla, which uh, he had no experience or education in the automotive industry or electrical car industry. And in the past, there was no success in electrical cars. So he wasn't afraid to take the shot. I'm going to take the shot and try to make successful electric cars and be a successful automotive automotive or automotive company and interestingly enough ford and tesla are the only companies in the history of car companies that have never been bankrupt and he came very close so there was only one company when he started tesla that never went bankrupt they all go bankrupt he wasn't afraid to take that shot and be the second one And he wasn't afraid to take the shot of fighting against oil because the manufacturer of cars that take oil, he had to fight against those industries because now he's doing electrical. He had to fight against the car manufacturers that were manufacturing these cars that take oil. He wasn't afraid. And look at Tesla stock is crazy. People, I see people driving classes everywhere. Lastly is SpaceX, the aerospace company he started. He had no experience or education in aerospace engineering architecture, everything that involves technician in every space. He had nothing. He taught himself all that. And he wasn't afraid to take the shot of creating an aerospace company. He was fighting against the big boys, Lockheed Martin, Boeing. They were the ones who were getting all the funding from the military complex in aerospace. So he had to get in there, not relatively not known, and fight for that money. And he did it. He wasn't afraid to take that shot. He wasn't afraid of taking a shot at reusing. Rockets have three stages, and the first stage is a stage that 
disconnects from the other two and then just drops in the water and it's about $60 million lost. He said, I'm going to try to re-land that piece so I don't lose $60 million every time. He kept trying and trying and trying, fail, fail, until he was able to do it. He wasn't afraid to take that shot. Now he can re-land that. And he's taking different steps and changing the whole aerospace industry through costs. Now things, more, more things can be shipped out into space because the costs are going down. He's also taking a shot of colonizing Mars. He's actually doing this and he's not afraid. Nobody's ever done this and he's taking that shot. So there you have it. The action for the episode is read these three books, Relentless by Tim Grover, to become more relentless. That way you can get better at anything. Life Without Limits by Nick Vujicic to not focus on your limits so you can get better at anything. Elon Musk's biography by Ashley Vance to not be afraid to take those shots that you want to take so you can get better at anything. Then apply to whatever you want to become better at. Now, I want to thank you, the listener, for helping Let's Conquer Books podcast have over 3,000 plays and downloads. My personal reading challenge, I'm at 152 books out of 170. I would love to know your reading challenge has gone is going have it has it gone so far feedback on the show any suggestions on who i should interview or books i should talk about or book recommendations so let's connect on twitter instagram facebook all the links are in the description i'm usually on instagram and we'll see you on the next one Please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Anchor, or any other podcasting platform so you don't miss the next episode where I talk about turning obstacles into opportunities. <laughs>